people who are you know, just, that's the problem when you get voice actors together. You see three people, but you really get 57, four people. You get, you get 47, 8,000 voices coming out of us at any one time. My name's Kyle. Uh, my name's Robbie Damon. Hello, guys. Hey, I'm Max Middleman. And I'm Ray Chase. Hey, you guys want to be in my vlog? We have one microphone between the four of us, uh, so we're only going to talk one word at a time. Hi, we are here. I don't want to do this anymore. I can only do four people. Uh, so, uh, well, why don't we just, for the people who are here that just saw Animation Panel, why don't we give them like the book jacket of who we are and why we're here? Uh, the list of things, the things we do, the voices in our head that we sometimes get paid to do. But most of the time, we don't. No, hi. So anyway, uh, I'm known as Adult Gohan. I'm Dragon Ball Z and Super. Uh, I was Ryu in Street Fighter. Uh, and then Fire Emblem, Mobile, and Awakening as Frederick. And a couple other dudes on the, on the new one for 3DS. Uh, Kamina Gurulagan, uh, Kiba Naruto, Aizen and Bleach, and many, many more. Yeah. Uh, I read your I to be on the way over here. It took me like the whole plane ride from Los Angeles. <laughs> it's like 12 hours of just thumbing. Uh, uh, I, Robbie, I, uh, Ray and I just finished uh, Final Fantasy 15 as uh, Prompto and Noctis, respectively. And uh, we, what else just came out? Uh, Persona 5, I was Akechi. And uh, I'm playing uh, Mitsuki in uh, upcoming Boruto and Next Generations. And Oh, I'm Tuxedo Mask in Sailor Moon, and some other stuff. Read my MDB, it's a third of the length of this. <laughs> hey, hey, so I uh, play Saitama, One Punch Man, and uh, in Fire Emblem, I'm Leo. I also play Caden in Fire Emblem, and Forrest in Fire Emblem, and Gordon in Fire Emblem, <laughs> and Gray in Fire Emblem. <laughs> King and Seven Deadly Sins, and Ryuji in Persona 5, and a bunch of other stuff. So, oh, and uh, Botanist in Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> which was cut. <laughs> you keep saying that, you weren't. You were Soul 2, I think, made it into the Gladio DLC. Uh, Max finally got it. Uh, uh, my name's Ray Chase, I am Noctis in Final Fantasy 15. I play the uh, subway stop announcer in Persona 5. Uh, <laughs> one of my greatest roles. Uh, Fire Emblem, I've got uh, a bunch of two, Gaius, Roy, Alphonse, and uh, Fernand, and I'm Puri Puri Prisoner in One Punch Man. We're, we're, all four of us are in One Punch Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Movement Rider and you're... Atomic Samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we're all, we have so many things together, it's, it's crazy, and I'm sure you guys know it. There's a reason why you're here, you can just come upstairs to stage two for no reason. Uh, surely you know uh, stuff that we've done. So um, we just want to do a question and answer session. Because uh, I guess, yeah, usually it's we explain what a voice actor is, but uh, it's pretty simple. You, uh, you audition and um, you hope to get in and then you go in and then you sit lines. And there's, there's very rarely artwork, so you kind of have to make up the voice and then uh, it comes out a couple years later and you go, oh, that's cool. It's, uh, it's fun. Okay, that's it. There you go. Yay. <laughs> So um, I think the best way to do it is just hands up and uh, we'll just pick you at random and use your uh, outside voice and answer your questions. Right, Go for it. Well, there were two directors. It was in what's known as development hell for seven years, where it just Nothing really gets done. They came up with the idea for it. It was Final Fantasy XIII versus. Uh, they had a different director and uh, uh, Nomura, Tetsuya Nomura. He designed the characters. He designed the world, and then nothing really happened for seven years. Then I think Square got annoyed with that, and they said, "Okay, let's actually get this done." They hired uh, Hajime Tabata and a whole new team to actually flesh out the game. And uh, we only worked on it for about two and a half years. Right. So that gives you an idea that it, you could say that around that time plus a little bit more is how long it took them to develop like the new story with all of the voice acting and all of that, even though a lot of the game engine stuff was in place. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. 
How old are you? How old are you? Um, you're yeah. 11, so you are the entire development cycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think right earlier, man, it was in development heck uh, is where it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm not just saying that because it's me. <laughs> like, how about you? Not that big. Uh, no, we recorded it uh, not too long ago, and uh, as far as I know, we're done with my portion of it, and uh, it's fun, and I recorded quite a bit of it, so hopefully it'll be a nice slice of what you guys liked about that. Do you remember the hint that you gave last time? What was it? Last panel, you said, here's what, here's what it's going to feature. Yeah, this is what it's going to feature. <clears throat> Literally, like if I recorded a thousand lines, like 800 of them are shivering. So, <laughs> just get ready for it. It's, yeah, um, I, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I, I, you know, whenever you get featured in something, uh, you, you hope the best for it. And um, once I saw this, the script the first time, I was like, ah, this is going to be great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Favorite part of being a voice actor? Just getting to record with these guys. <laughs> Not really. Um, <laughs> I think uh, free food, craft services sometimes comes by. <laughs> um, no, I, this is this is like the only profession that I can if I get picture myself being a part of. Um, I went to college. I was four years. I was a pre-med student, and then. Um, my last year in college, I decided, you know what, <clears throat> I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm not committed uh, to, the, to the whole doctor thing, so I changed my major to theater, and once I did that, I kind of, everything kind of um, came together because I was denying myself of what um, I really wanted to be doing, so, um, so I, I, I don't know, just my favorite part of being a voice actor is getting to create, getting to um, be a creative person. And to clarify, you did not drop out of college. No. You continued on and got your degree in what you wanted to do. Yeah. Right, I didn't want to say, like, the moral of the story, kids, is if you don't like college, drop out. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it wasn't that I didn't like college. I, I, was, I was not doing well. And I called my parents, actually, and I said, um, Mom, Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm going to drop out of college. And they were like, just change your major. <laughs> We've told you this for four years. Just change it. So I did. Uh, that made all the difference. To pursue something that I really enjoyed doing. That's what that's what college was for. I think doing what you love and being able to cobble together a living, you know, it, it's not about fame and fortune and all that and like, oh, I make six figures a year. No, 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 no. If you find something that feeds your soul and it doesn't feel like work, I mean, yes, you work hard at your craft, but you're passionate about it. I think that's where it really, really pays off in spades. I grew up wanting to do voices for animation. I was probably seven, eight years old watching classic Looney Tunes and stuff. And I grew up also wanting to be on the radio. So I went to college. Yay, yeah, kids, don't drop out. Uh, I got a broadcast degree, worked in radio for years, and then I kind of transitioned into voiceover with Dragon Ball Z back in 2000 for 17 years. I've been pushing towards that. I got out of radio, moved to the west coast uh, of the States, Los Angeles where the hub of the voice acting gigs are for video games, animation, and, and many other types of projects. And it's been so fun meeting people in the industry, these wonderful people you see up here, uh, and, and, and countless others that we get to work with on a weekly basis, uh, whether we're together in the same room, which is the most fun, or we tend to meet by ourselves when we're dubbing anime or video games, you come one actor at a time, but it's so much fun. To get, because every every time you go into the booth, it's a new kind of challenge. It's like, what do I get to be today? A, a talking broomstick, or a, or an old man, or a demon, or whatever. I mean, it's just it's great. And of course, this is icing on the cake, getting to travel the world, see you guys, see new places, and all that wonderful stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think my favorite part of it is um, are, are the are the little moments that you're actually in the studio and you get to do um, good work. Like you have that moment where you're like, oh, I feel good about that from an artistic craft standpoint. It's a good job overall at recovering that, but my personal favorite moments are, are those moments, because it's what I grew up doing, it's what I'm trained in, and um, voice actors, there's not a lot of us. It's a pretty small community, and an even smaller community of those that get to do what we call theatrical work, uh, anime, cartoons, video games, to do that as our primary income. 
most voiceover actors' primary income are commercials, promos, stuff that's it's good for your paycheck, but it's not the most artistically fulfilling. So my favorite moments are those moments where you get to go in and you have a really great acting moment, and you know it, the director knows it, the engineer knows it, the producer knows it, and you all go, ah. You know, that, that doesn't happen every day. You know, so that's my favorite part. I don't like being a voice actor. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> you guys know any job I'm doing. Uh, no, for me, it's it's uh, just being able to play so many different types of roles. Uh, whereas if you're uh, an on-camera actor, you pretty much are limited to what you look like. Um, but for voice acting, you you multiple times a week you get to change up your physicality and uh, change up your age or even gender. Um, get to play any sort of character, and I really enjoy those. That's that's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, great question. Thank you. We have one over here. Yeah. The character that you enjoy the most, and for me, that's it's obvious. It's Noctis from Final Fantasy. That was we worked on that for two years. We're still working on it. Just getting to know a character from start to finish and being able to tell an entire life story that is uh, that doesn't come along very often. Most of the work that we do, we get to place a character in a moment of their lives, but getting to play someone all the way through was amazing. I like different characters for different reasons. Uh, of course, Saitama, One Punch Man, is one of my faves. Um, but I even like like Ben 10, the newest Ben 10 on Cartoon Network. Is anybody watching that? Anybody? Anybody? Great! Um, <laughs> you are, yes! <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Uh, but uh, that's fun just because I get to go in and record with uh, the cast, is really, really cool. Uh, they don't care. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's great. Uh, I've got an unpopular answer too. Uh, my favorite character is a character from a Nickelodeon show from a couple of years ago called Breadwinners. Uh, it was one of the most reviled things that I ever did. But I loved that show. Uh, it was 80 episodes of like sugar cereal, hyperactive, whatever, and I played a, a, a hyperactive duck who delivers bread in, in a rocket van. And uh, I get to sing every episode. It was comedy, it was a group record, but at Nickelodeon was some of the best people in the business. I got to do 80 episodes of it for three years. It's still on TV, on Nicktoons. So that, even though it's something that I'm not very well known for, it's, it's definitely my favorite role. I just want to say, like, uh, on his show, I guessed it, my first ever original character um, for animation, Western animation, and um, so that's that's also one of my favorite characters. Yeah, and, and it's a very silly show. I like silly stuff. It was the Poltergeist. The Poltergeist. <laughs> it was the world's most annoying voice. Ah. <laughs> I came in, I was like, this guy's annoying. But he's gonna be my friend. <laughs> Did you say Poltergeist? Poltergeist. Poltergeist. That's a amazing. Goose. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, that's great. Um. Obviously, Gohan for Dragon Ball Z has, has dominoed into everything else in my career, so I'm super, super grateful. Because I started as a fan of Dragon Ball in general, so getting to work on a show you're a fan of is like, what? Mind blown. But something that means to me the most personally is that as one of those, take this off the bucket list, was getting to be Ryu in Street Fighter, because Ryu in Street Fighter got to have a cameo in Wreck It Ralph. And that's a great Disney movie, and I love it. I'm a gamer, and, and everyone that worked on that film got it. They said, no, we're not going to just have a bunch of big celebrities do all the voices. We're going to have some cameos from things people know, and we're going to get the actual voices of them. It's like, thank you! Oh, so awesome. Okay, one. Uh, what we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. How Are there any new movies or Dragon Ball Z TV shows that I know of? Well, Super is currently running in Japan and in English in the States. I don't know if any Super episodes airing in English here yet. They're online. Yeah, I know. I'm going to say that again. We can find it, Kyle. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. I know. But yes, yes. So watch it in English. But when it comes out on video, please support it with your purchases. Please. Thank you. Okay. Also, box. Uh, <laughs> As far as movies, I honestly thought that the success of the last two movies, theatrically, that they were just going to do that forever. Because they could have, and they still might. I haven't heard any, any rumblings about any more movies because Super is continuing to be a huge success on a weekly basis. And in Japan, they're up to 80 plus episodes, or 90 or up to. And then in England, like in English, in America, we've been up to like 20 something. Or something. We're, we're getting there. We've got a ways to go. But, uh, 
Yeah, it, it's continuing. Dragon Ball Z Universe is coming to the Nintendo Switch this fall. They got announced on the Nintendo Select uh, the broadcast recently. And uh, yeah, we're stoked about it. So obviously, keep your, your ears to the ground and uh, you want to know some new stuff that happens. You know who's not excited about that announcement? That kid right there. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He's just saying. <laughs> I want to go work here this sir. Oh yeah, I was a narrator too. Uh, so if you watch Dragon Ball Z, you pick up the Blu-ray, you can hear it. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> what do you guys think? So who's the convention organizer on the announcement saying, like, coming up next and all that? It's like, hey, we've got voice actors here. Why don't we, why don't we get to do the top of the hour announcements in our character voices? You guys want to hear that? Yeah. On the main stage, it's, you know, something like that. Nobody will understand our accents. You don't think? I don't know. I was ordering dinner last night and someone said, your accent. I'm like, thanks, screw it myself. <laughs> up on the main stage. <laughs> Nobody cares. Hi guys, my question is for Robbie and Ray. Can you guys audition for any prior earlier Final Fantasy and what was different about that day? Well, uh, yeah, Robbie was in... <laughs> uh, I did uh, the game that the Juice Demo was... Uh, Sold a million copies in the States. It was called Type Zero. Uh, it was one of those uh, spin offs, it was all Class Zero. And I was the head of Type Zero uh, Kurosami. So, and it was a great part. I really enjoyed it. Like, I got to do all the Final Fantasy tropes. I got to, like, shoot a magical laser beam into the sky and go, ah! Like, and yell. It was perfect. And I was like, well, that's my Final Fantasy. Uh, like, I, I got to do one. I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I wish it was a number one. And then um, we were still finishing doing pickups, and I saw the auditions come out for 15. And I was like, nah, I recognized the artwork right away. I was like, that's the Final Fantasy. I was like, nah, no way, but I'm going to play off the tracks. So I did a couple things. I read for Prompto and I read for Noctis, and I got called back for both. And then, uh, but then when I went to the callbacks, I was like, nah, Prompto's the one that I'm going to get. I don't want to get anything. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, the rest is what we did. Yeah, uh, so I, I did that one. And then Rainy did it retroactively. You did an older Final Fantasy character after Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, yeah. Very character. strangely. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I, I, I was in World of Final Fantasy as Edgar from Final Fantasy VI. So I got to play another uh, royalty who wields chainsaws, which was awesome. That was a big one, true. Um, and, uh, and for me, I auditioned for... Those are both around the same time. World of Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy XV were being auditioned around the same time. Um, and I had auditioned. I was sent Prompto. No, I wasn't. I was sent Ignis, Noctis, and Gladio, and uh, I, my Noctis one was correct, the other two were very incorrect. <laughs> my, my Ignis was like, here, yeah, because he said it was, uh, he's a, a subordinate, so I said he's right here, but that was not the Ignis that they were going for. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, and that was it, and I worked on those. Oh, and the callbacks, I was terrified, my callback was really bad. Uh, but they hired me anyway, amazingly, because they said, no, his, his audition, we know he can do this, even though he's really nervous for the callback. And then you survived the recast. And then the demo came out, and people said that Noctis' voice is terrible, find a better one, someone who's younger. That's not what they said. And uh, as well, uh, there were certainly some uh, YouTube uh, comments they that said were choice. It's too deep and gravelly. It's too deep and gravelly, which when we had recorded Noctis for the first time, we recorded him both ways as a, a badass American, kind of like a Duke Nukem, like down here. And then one that's his, the, the voice of Anna Bean. Um, and when it came time to recast, I had to spend a month proving that I could do this voice and be able to act with it, not just put on the voice. So it was a, that was a terrifying month-long uh, process for me. It was, it was rough. The best anime that we've ever watched. <laughs> oh, man. I was a fan of Fooly Cooly back in the day, and I was back, and I was a big yeah, Fooly Cooly Cooly. I didn't understand Fooly Cooly when I was a kid when I watched it. It gave me weird feelings. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, just all over. All over. Um, I, I, I loved Full Metal Alchemist. And I'm trying to think of like uh, 
more obscure one that I really liked than uh, uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite was one that uh, no one under 16 should look up, but it was called uh, Ninja Scroll. It was an anime film from the, I want to say mid 90s? Yeah, 94. That sounds about right. Yeah, absolutely. Not about right. He knows exactly what it is. <laughs> and that was like the first, uh, I think I rented that like on the slide from the video store when I was a kid and like watched it when I was 12 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this looks like a cool cartoon. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That's my first anime. And it stayed one of my favorites for forever. Yeah, I really liked it a lot. I'm in love with Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it great? And we know all those people that work on it now, so it's like, oh my god! <laughs> so awesome. Yes, Goku. <laughs> Favorite line? Fight you. No, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> or the TV edit version, I'm gonna destroy you. <laughs> See, we always have to do edited versions. But um, we we would always, since there were four of us that were mainly interacting all the time, we would always have at least uh, two thirds of the conversation. So like, to, because we're all recording at the same time, so we'd have playback. So maybe one day I would get Ray and and and, uh, and uh, Ignis in my ear, and then maybe the next day they would get me and uh, you know. So we'd have stuff to play off. And our director was phenomenal, and he knew everyone's performance style, and he was able to read us in in a way that. The, the biggest comment about that game is that the conversations feel natural and there are relationships there. I think those are developed in a very weird way. They're developed in hearing someone and giving a, a, a disembodied voice a personality and then interacting with that personality. It's a, I think it's a unique acting thing that only happens in our, our business and our experience. By the time we well, already became friends in real life, and I'm definitely buddies with, with Chris and Abby, but like, uh, I feel like I've become friends with those guys over the last two and a half years just by going through that journey with them. So, um, so we recorded together in a sense, but more of a new sense <laughs> than a real one. The, the most significant thing about recording together, the reason why we couldn't do it for Final Fantasy is because of time. We had to match the timing within five frames. Uh, so, because they don't, the mouth movements they do in software, so thankfully we didn't have to do like anime, they don't, the mouth movement is you actually have to match the lip motion. For us, they do it based on our performance, they which is nice. They but you can't, if we were recording together, we would have to be able to say a line within five frames of each other, and it was just, it was very, very difficult to do that. So that's why we couldn't do that for this game, unfortunately. And it prevents the engineers from like, uh, sort of working with massaging like sort of like the silences and tightening things up and getting it within that that time frame. That's what I'm gonna make do. Yeah. Two or four guys in the room and it's just chaos. 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 So that's <laughs> so whenever we do something that's dubbed or has pre existing time codes, it's almost all of by ourselves. But um, in the original animation, uh, we call it original if it originates in the states, something for like his community or whatever. Then that's when we do a group of things. That's when we just have a script. Most of them have our stories, which they can fluctuate. Uh, 
Uh, what was it? Dubbing versus. They call it free store. Oh, oh. Yeah, free life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like both for different reasons. I think um, kind of where I trained and where uh, I, I'd say relay is I, I, I have uh, a little more enjoyment just because you get to create the character from scratch versus uh, you have to kind of match something to timing. That in itself is kind of fun to do. It's kind of a challenge. Um, match timing and lip flap. But I really enjoy coming up with my own character, not based on anyone else's performance. It comes from my brain, solely my heart, and uh, I like that. I like your heart too. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I enjoy, I think we're all going to have the same answer. One cool thing about dubbing is that you get to see it immediately. So you get to see the take, make sure it was correct, and then move on. So you get to see exactly how it's going to be when it comes out. Uh, yeah, same, same, same. Dubbing is challenging for its own reasons and fun, but um, yeah, I do like a lot of comedy characters, and they're, I feel like I can do the drama and the action much easier. Uh, we get a comedy character, and there's nothing like the handcuffs of dubbing when you're trying to be funny. And it's like, you do something funny, and then the way that you deliver something, and they're like, oh, sorry, that's a half a second too long. Give an example real quick. There's that being funny, and then there's like emotional stuff where you will like actually like be crying and say like there's a lot of anime that are dramatic, like your Lion April or something like that. And um, like there, there were scenes where I would be shedding tears in the booth and have to retake it because it didn't fit to timing, and that's just frustrating. Yeah, yeah. So they're challenged. It's fun. Dubbing's fun for its own reason. But I gotta go with dubbing. Like the same here. Even video games that don't have time codes, like uh, or like um, like Western games or games that there's that not dub games. I'd rather do that than than like a, than like having a dub game too. Yeah. Say yeah, pre lay or recording cartoons because you have everybody in the same room. You get to watch everyone perform, which is so much fun. And you get to play off each other's performance. You get to, it feels more organic that way. Like we'll run through a scene, like that. page one through three in a script. And we'll run it from top to bottom, and uh, the director will give notes and stuff, and we'll do it as written. And maybe there's a little room for improv, and maybe we can punch a line and make it a little funnier, or, or whatnot. And uh, it, that is the most fun. That is a chance where we actually get the scripts ahead of time, so we can see what we're going to be doing and all that. Whereas with video games and anime, we're like cold. We, we go into the session, we have to depend on the director and the client to fill us in on what's going on that day with our character and all that. We have to build it up, which again is a really cool, fun challenge. But getting the the freedom from the the, the timing of lip flaps and all that, that's it, it, it's like a radio play, and that that's kind of what attracted me to voice acting is like you know what you build in your mind is going to be different for every individual listening to it. And that, that's fascinating. This? Oh, no, you were fast. You were very fast. I, when I got the audition for Saitama, I called this guy, uh, and I said, I just got another anime audition. No, I didn't say that. I said, um, and you actually said to me, did you get those auditions? I said, yeah. You were like, you have to watch it. And I was like, why? It's a, I get it. It's anime. I get the archetypes of anime. He's like, no, you don't. Uh, this, is, this is different. So I was like, very reluctant, but I watched the first episode. And then I binged the next eleven, um, and uh, I was like, I really want this character. Um, so then I uh, I auditioned for it. After that, like a month or two later, got a call back, and then like a couple weeks after that, got another call back, and then a couple weeks after that, got another call back. Um, that was the longest audition process I've ever had, and. Um, but, uh, but through all of that, it was great because I watched all of it. I knew where the character was going, and, um, and the producer of the show was really helpful. He would guide me through all the auditions. So yeah, I did definitely watched it beforehand. And uh, <laughs> there was, I, maybe I shouldn't have because I was, I, it made me so nervous to go into those callbacks afterwards. Um, it was really long. Yeah, do you remember it was like the worst two months of my life? <laughs> Just waiting. <laughs> He was like unbearable, <laughs> like the world's nicest guy. And he was just a wreck all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But here you are. Yeah. 
made it. Lost all my hair, but I made it. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII versus Kingdom Hearts II. I got this one. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your second question? Uh, what is your favorite game that you've ever played? Favorite game that I've ever played yeah. would have to be Final Fantasy 8. Ooh. What's that? <laughs> 7 is not the best Final Fantasy, in fact, it is 8. <laughs> I also enjoyed a game called Blinks on Xbox. <laughs> Nobody knows it. I mean, you do? You do? It looks like a vacuum cleaning cat. Yeah, and he was able to like rewind and stuff. Oh, it was great. <laughs> Best Final Fantasy is Tactics, uh, and uh, I enjoyed Fallout New Vegas. It's my favorite game. Uh, Best Final Fantasy is, in fact, Final Fantasy X, and uh, my favorite uh, game of all time would. Uh, all time? Ten's, ten's very close. Uh, 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 maybe a tie with um, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Oh, can we go to the Big Zelda? What? <laughs> this, you are so young to be, um, <laughs> so young to be blinded by nostalgia, my friends. <laughs> I, I feel as though you should go revisit those games. <laughs> those are great answers. Those are like, those are like classic, like, video game fan answers. What's the best Zelda? Ocarina yeah. of Time. What's the best Final Fantasy? 1997. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about your favorite game you've, uh, what was it? You, you uh, worked on? And then, well, you, oh, we, we didn't answer any that of you've ever played. No. Sure. All I've ever played. God, yeah, there, have there's too on. many. I go back to the arcade days of the 80s, so I played Pac-Man and Galaga <laughs> and Donkey Kong and Pole Position and Tempest and... Burger Time! Burger Time! Burger Time! Street Fighter 2? That's nice. Yeah, we... Man, oh man. Yeah, that just, I think Street Fighter 2 is just coming out for Switch today. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Well, that was only with the Xbox, don't we? I think, I got, well, PlayStation back in the day, before Xbox. Uh, this kid's actually a plant to keep this panel interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, get your, <laughs> you'll get your blue money after this. I don't know what they're called. I don't know. <laughs> We called on yet. Uh, let's see. I've seen yeah, yeah. Yes. no chance. So we went from chapter one to the end, and up until they were saving things to tell us, it was the course of course two and a half years, you know, the, uh, you don't want to blow every secret. So like every twist and turn we had, you know, we'd be a year in and be like, oh, by the way, this is something about your character. And like, what? So, um, and then when we got to the end and it was really described to us that happened in the last like, month or so of recording, like what really happened, what, what, how it was all going to really end, uh, of course, you feel like you're, you know, I mean, you're coming to the end of any journey. And, Two and a half years on any project in this business is a long time. And for, for it to be such a character-centric game and then leave it behind, uh, no, we're still kind of working on it. It's, yeah, of course, absolutely, yeah. And for me, it was my first video game that I ever worked on. So it was really a journey from start to finish. That chronological thing really helped me get to build the character all the way um, as he ages, too. Um, and we didn't re-record much uh, during that thing. The only thing, I, we did a couple of versions of the cinematic where he goes on the throne at the end, where Nox goes on the throne, um, just for emotional tweaks and to say like, okay, maybe uh, less uh, weepy on certain things and, and make him a little stronger. We read the train stage too. Oh, I did not. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Very cool, yeah. So oh, thanks. Keep your hand up if you have not asked a question. Yeah, we gotta call the biggest guy with the cutest backpack. <laughs> <laughs> the toughest looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> the best guy. Uh, was there anyone else who could have been 
Any character. We could voice any character in past, present, and future. Who would it be? Uh, I just was repeating the question. I didn't have an answer. <laughs> For those who didn't hear, that was the question. Well, that's tough because if it's an existing character, that means we're stealing words from some of our friends. Yes. Uh, but um, I'll totally do that. Uh, <laughs> anime, I would love to be. There was a role that's now been cast twice. And I'll never get to do it. It was completely wrong for me. I would love to play Guts and Berserk, uh, but I would need uh, the universe to come down and give me a different voice. But uh, I, I always would want to. I've always wanted to play just a rough and tough, just tough guy. And uh, I have a few times, but it's never that. It's never the voice. It's always like a like a fisherman sort of manly. I don't know. That character makes me uncomfortable. Uh, so I would love to do that. And then as far as a character, this is such a bad answer, I can't wait till I can stop saying it. I'm playing my, my dream character right now, and, uh, and, and it's been awesome. I've been working on it for two years, or a year and a half, and, uh, and I'll be able to announce in July, uh, July, finally what it is. But um, that's been super awesome. So I'm playing my dream character, I just can't tell you what it is. So, I don't know, find us online, we'll tell you. Anything in Star Wars, the games, the cartoons, the movies, because the voice actors also have big parts of movies too. I mean, if it's Stormtrooper A or whatever, you know, get shot and all that fun stuff. Um, God, I have always wanted to maybe voice like the next big pop culture animated character that's not even invented yet. You know, become the next big SpongeBob SquarePants or something. I mean, something, something cool because it is awesome getting to be the English voice of, of an anime character. But I think it would be even cooler to say, I am that. Like John DiMaggio is is you know Bender, and Billy West is Fry. You know, I want to be able to say, okay, Kyle is that character. It's like, okay, I'm down with that. It's like, yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm, I think everyone wants to secretly play Batman. But then they compare to Kevin Conroy and I'm like, I'd love to be Josuke in uh, JoJo. I am, uh, I've just gotten into that show and I'm like, oh, he's right in my range. That'd be fun. I have no idea when those auditions will come out, but I'll be for them for sure. Not that I would ever play this character, uh, because the man who plays it is perfect for the role, and I, I, I wouldn't even be able to, but it was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid, it was Invader Zim. Um, I love Invader Zim. Maybe I'd be Gurr. Uh, I don't know, that's, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have, what do we have, like four minutes left, three minutes left? Do we want to do a like, speed round of questions? I think it's a 45 minute panel, right? Uh, let's, do, uh, let's, do, let's do a lightning round. Lightning round, okay. Okay, what's that? Oh, 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 yeah, it was a crunchy roll that I did over uh, over there, yeah. I guess you can watch me on YouTube, but hopefully now that I'm live, it'd be nicer. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me just choose real quick. So I saw your hand, and then it would be you, and then you, and anybody else, and you. Okay, so we'll go in that order. Go ahead. Spiral Crash. What was it? Spiral Crash. Spyro. Spyro because I was in Skylanders. I like Nintendo. Mario. <laughs> yes, I love Undertale. I keep telling these guys to play with it on the PC. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I haven't played it. I uh, never played it. Never played it. Oh, he's the only cool one. Yes, sir. Favorite line in our character's voice. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Ooh, uh, one of my one of my favorites is uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Guild Thunder, uh, Lightning King Iron Hammer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I love the one opportunity that I got to say. I've uh, come up with a new recipe. <laughs> and then in the back, right, Gladio? Um, favorite Kingdom Hearts character since I know you played the Master of Keys. Yes, uh, I was a master of Keyblade Masters, and he is my favorite character because he's so mysterious. I love it. I mean, my character is my favorite character. <laughs> I played Lushu. We actually have a scene together at the very end of uh, Two Point Eight. Uh, goofy. <laughs> I was gonna say Goofy. Oh, oh, cool. Pretty much. Is that it? That's it, I think. Oh yay! Oh, right. Get out of here!
hear you guys.